What up, what up? What's going on, Next Life Grinders? We down here in St. Louis, we in the Lou. We had to becoming the best youth speaking conference. I'm speaking this weekend, super excited, but guess what? Most people, when they touch down, they just want to relax and all the good stuff, but I'm not doing that. I'm about to go find the gym. We're gonna get some footage of working out because the grind never stops. Let's get it. Man, good work. See, one of those excuses. You hear him on business, out of town, out of state, I could've easily not worked out. But hey, did a little 20 minute circuit. Still kept the body moving. Still grinding, nice little pump. Don't make, don't make shit so hard. Just do it. Just do it. Here we go, here we go. Day one of the Becoming the Best You Conference and we about to get it. Let's go! Hey, what up, what up, what up? Just had a great workout with my girl, Sarah Bastin. She's an absolute beast. Put me through an ab workout, did a Tabata style, and she, her workout is crazy challenging. But it's okay, because that's one of the things about us fitness enthusiasts. You can always learn something from somebody else. And so that's what I did. I learned today. And uh, we just gonna keep the grind going. Let's get it. What up, what up, what's going on? 
This is the evening of day two. It is so much growth that happens at these things. Becoming the best you has been such an amazing experience and it's not even over yet because I hit the stage tomorrow. I had my breakout session earlier today. It went well. Really, really excited just to be giving back and just giving my all in helping people. Anyway, tonight though, we get the black tie event. Hey, about to have a good time. Let me get some footage of that. Let's get it. slang terminology. Yes, yes, I know. My Toastmasters Club would be disappointed in me. <laughs> my fellow Black Belt Speaker family, please don't judge me. My fellow Becoming the Best You family, don't judge me. No. But what I want to do is, I want to give it to you raw. Now when I say raw, I mean real as what? As a matter of fact, say real as what? Real as what? like that. Three phrases you be hearing. First one, go. Now when I say go, it means go ahead. Second, a hundred. I'm going to be 100 transparent with you. Third, don't. I'm not talking about that booger sugar. I'm talking about amazing and excellent. Is that okay? Can I keep it wrong with you? Uh -huh. I just want to let every one of you all know, you all are dope. Now go ahead and give it up for yourselves. Clap, clap, clap. Woo! You could have been anywhere else, but you chose to be here, which tells me that you have a growth mindset. You care about your personal and professional development, and you care about helping others. So I do appreciate you. My name is Tommy Morgan. I'm retired Air Force. I do have a beautiful, lovely wife I'm from Chicago, Sky Heights, Illinois. But I was raised in University Park, Illinois. Yes. Currently, I reside down in Columbia, South Carolina. Like I said, I have an amazing wife. That's my backbone. I have four children, two boys, two girls. Are there any other veterans in here? Give me a favor, stand up. Stand up. On your feet, please stand up. Give all of my veterans a round of applause because I appreciate your own sacrifice. I understand what it takes. As a matter of fact, what we do is, and y'all remember this, I'm going to salute oh. each and every one of you. So thank you. Now, I did 20 years, one month in the military. I knew what I wanted to do when I grew up. So, in 2020, I was literally like a pit bull with a leash around my neck, just waiting to break free and die full force into my fitness business. My business is called Next Life Coaching. No T, just N-E-X, Life Coaching. Now, I'm gonna tell you about how I came up with that name, because it is a deep-rooted why. My why is always deep-rooted, never surface level. Now, how I came up with that name, is I don't believe in excuses. Any X stands for no excuses. But we all go through things, right? We all go through things. And I didn't want to go on Google one day and say, hey, what's a cool business name? I had to dig deep right here. 
Now, before I go into my story about how I came up with the name, I want you to do, I want you to repeat after me. In order for it to get through, we must go through. In order to get through, we must go through. All right, that was cute. <laughs> now, this is what I want you to do. Frown your face up, and I want you to say it with more conviction. In order for it to get through, we must go through. In order for it to get through, we must go through. Now, when I say get through, I'm talking about get through to your mind. We must go through a process. I had to go through my process back in 2010. My first nine years in the Air Force, I was really good at one thing and one thing only. Can anybody guess what that was? It's PT. How you get me off quote, Dr. Roche? How you get me off top? Yes. Get in trouble. Get in trouble. But how I got in trouble was I was a party head. That's all I cared about is kicking it 24-7. I didn't care about anything else. Destroyed a lot of relationships. And I was a habitual cheater. I objectified women. I looked at them as physical beings. I crushed souls. I didn't think there was anything wrong with it at the time. And that's because the more I crushed souls, they would never leave. And not only would they ever leave, never leave, more would come. So I thought it was, it was okay, because more women kept coming and coming when they knew the type of person I was. Crush your soul is not a good thing. But in 2010, I had a series of unfortunate events that took place that made me literally do a 180 degree turn in my life. And I want to share that with you. Come on. At the end of 2010, I was in the process of my second divorce. She was pregnant with my now 12 year old son. Take your time, Tommy. Right. During this particular time, Bring your raw, bro. in the beginning stages of our separation, I had to live in a moldy, roach infested room. One night, I literally was sleeping, had my eyes closed. And I heard, <laughs> I said, am I dreaming? And I heard it again. <laughs> I said, that can't be dream. Oh my, I woke up, flipped the light switch on, and I saw a roach this size, crawling on the wall. And it was flying, flapping. And it was slapping, it hit the wall. That was the noise I was hearing. But I had to get myself out of the situation. I stayed in there for two months until I found a new apartment. So things are looking up. Yes, I'm still in the process of going through my second divorce, but at least I'm out of that moldy, roach infested room. As yeah. soon as I get into my apartment, I get hit with a $12,000 debt to the military because I didn't sign the proper paperwork to get me out of my housing situation. I have no idea what to do. Has anybody ever owed Uncle Sam any money? They snatch it quick, don't they? Go. The majority of my paycheck was literally going to this debt. I still had rent to pay, I still had utilities to pay, I still had a car note to pay, and I still had child support to pay because I did, I do have an older daughter for my first wife that I still was supporting. I'm asking supervisors, what do I do? Can you help me out? And nobody's giving me any answers to one supervisor, his name is Chad, came through, clutch is what I like to call him. So he came through and was able to reverse my debt, get it cleared, thank God. Mm. Debt is cleared, still going through divorce, but at least I'm still moving up. I'm no longer down here. Now, during this particular time period, period I'm just getting to the Facebook thing. And you know how it is when you first get excited when you go through Facebook, you see your mutual friends list and people you haven't seen in years, and you're like, oh man, this person's doing well. I love it. I see a name that pops up on that list. His name is Courtney. I said, man, this is my little brother. He was like my little brother in high school. So I sent him a friend request. He accepts. And he sends me a message. He says, I see you doing big things in the military. He said, I'm proud of you. He said, I'm the he said, I also want to thank you for what you did for me in high school. I kept my head on straight. 
can be headed in a great direction. I'm the CEO of my own promotion company. I have a beautiful little girl, and I owe some of that to you because you kept my head on straight. So he said, thank you, big bro. Now, I was taken back because during this time, I didn't know I could have a positive influence on somebody's life like that. Because what I kept hearing was I had spouses who didn't want their husbands to hang around with me because I was a bad influence. And so for Courtney to tell me, thank you, thank you, big bro, was shocking and detestable. Well, this world we live in is, can be crazy. And Courtney was murdered two months later. Brutally. Was shot 25 to 30 times. While I'm in the process of trying to process this information, I'm not understanding how I, had, I could have had such a powerful conversation with somebody and they just get taken away just like that. It takes me about a week, I'm still trying to process it, trying to process it. And I get another message that says, your grandmother's not doing too well, and she's in the hospital. Now this is Big Mama. Literally the glue that holds our entire household together, our entire family. My biggest fan. Whenever I had letters from colleges who were interested in going to their school to play football, I would give them straight to my grandma. Because I wanted to make her proud. And she gave the best advice. Shortly after hearing about my grandmother not doing too well, she passed away. Here I am, not understanding what to do. There's a quote that says, grandmas hold our tiny little hands for just a little while, but our hearts forever. My grandmother has my heart forever. But I'm sitting here, devastated, shoulders slumped, not knowing what to do. And I'm picking up a guy and asking, what lesson are you trying to tell me? What are you trying to teach me? And I feel this fire boiling, and it's coming up. And I feel it right here in my forehead. And my head gets bigger and bigger. I have so much rage in me. I don't know how to control it. Now, I wasn't suicidal. But what I had was, if the wrong person said the wrong thing to me, it was going to be one. And anybody who knows how to fight knows what that means. And at that moment, right before I almost broke, God said, sit still. Don't move. Sit still. You see, when you live a life in a fast lane, you speed past growth development, then you can be headed down a path that's not conducive to the path that you need to be headed down. So he said, slow down. Sit still. I did that. It lasted about a good seven, eight months. During this process, what I would do was, I literally would go to work, come right back home, and sit still and just think. I started distancing myself from certain social circles I was hanging around, certain friends, since we live streaming. If my old friends see this, and you were wondering why you were unfriended, that's because you were cool, but I could do this to my lifestyle. But I had to figure out how to get my life on track. So I needed that quietness. At the eighth month mark, some told me, get up, get in the gym. Because I grew up playing baseball, basketball, and football. So I wasn't a stranger to the gym, but during my party and lifestyle, my health declined and my fitness level declined tremendously. So I got back in the gym. Motivated as ever. Pushing weight around, focus, killing the weights. Has anybody ever done that before? where you had to work out some things, you had no real fitness goal, but you know you needed to work some things out. Yes, sir. But that's how it was, focus. And the guy saw me and approached me and said, I see you in here putting in some serious work. He says, I'm starting my own fitness business and I want to use you as a protege to help promote my business. Would you be interested about coaching the bodybuilding competition? I said, bodybuilding? I don't know nothing about the bodybuilding, but I don't have nothing that's going on, so let's do it. You would have thought I jumped on an opportunity right then and there. No, I didn't. I did what a lot of us do. I procrastinated. Because it felt like I needed the perfect time of day, perfect weather, perfect workout outfit, perfect supplements in order to get the process started. So 
I was able to drag on and on for about a good six months, and then finally I said, let's do it. Best decision ever. He put me through an 11-week program. I lost 40 pounds. I was shredded. Guess what? Now it's time for me to step on stage, a bodybuilding stage. And I'm nervous. I have no idea what to expect. I'm walking fast, but for some reason, everything is in slow motion. And I look at all 800 people in the audience. It felt like I locked eyes with every single person. And I look at the lights, and the lights are bright, shining directly on me. And the craziest thing happened. There's a light right here. It is brighter. It's the brightest one. And it's beaming. And I hear a sound that goes, Ping. That was my aha moment. That's the moment that everything started to make sense. Everything slowed down, all the stars aligned perfectly. Everything made sense. I had tears running down my face. I looked great on the outside, on that stage, but I could care less about how that looked. I cared more about this inside. For the first time in my life, I felt whole. I felt whole. Because when my health and my fitness went up, all the areas that are absolutely sucked at, like being a husband, a father, supervisor, co-working troop, those areas went up tremendously. That's it. Thank you. And when I went through that process, I said, how is it that I feel that I can accomplish anything? Because going through that process, I learned the three Ds. Please write this down. Discipline, determination, dedication. Discipline, determination, dedication. Once I learned those three Ds, I felt like I can accomplish anything. It didn't matter what it was. You can tell me I can be president of the United States right now. Let's go. It does not matter what it is, I will accomplish it. As long as I stay aligned with discipline, determination, and dedication. And so when I talk, what I said to myself was, I wonder if other people feel this same way. So for the next two or three years after leaving the stage, I will ask random people about where their priorities were. Because I wanted to understand their strengths and their weaknesses. And I found out that a lot of people I talked to had the same mentality that I used to have. To where they'd be good in one area, weaker in other areas. And I would ask them, well, how come you're not trying to be better than those other areas? And I always with excuse and excuse and excuse and excuse. And I said, we have to change that mentality. So I started building workout plans, nutrition plans, doing accountability for folks, mindset coaching, because I do believe the mind and the body grow hand in hand. Yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. And there goes the birth of next life coaching. Because I don't believe in excuses, I believe in flexibility, workarounds, growing through the process, and doing something not for a season, but for life and for the longevity. And as I build this business, I wouldn't have been able to do it if I hadn't been through, going through my second divorce, being $12,000 in debt, having my friend Courtney be murdered, having my grandmother pass away all in four months. All in four months. But I had to go through that process. Now I'm standing here today, no longer as a boy with his shoulders slumped, feeling defeated. But now I have my shoulders back, chest up. I feel confident about whatever it is that I want to do. I'm a, I have a successful business. I've coached hundreds of people, not locally, not nationally, internationally, all around the world. Europe, Asia, Asia, all over the world. I've coached them. Woo! I'm standing here as a successful father. I had a good relationship with my oldest daughter, my oldest son. I had my two young kids. Two weeks ago, I was laying down and I was doing a workout. I was doing abs. Crunches. And my youngest son, my five year old son, he comes in playing, he's watching what I'm doing, and he starts doing exercises with me. I said, huh. I kind of grew up with the mentality of do as I say, not as I do. I don't believe in that at all. I believe in leadership by example. 
because me seeing my son watch what I do and do the exercises with me, he's learning. My kids watch my every move. Now I'm in a house with my lovely wife, my backbone. My daughter, my two-year-old daughter, my five-year-old son, they watch when I hold my wife's hand. They watch when I hug the wife. What do you think that does to their mind when you see their parents grow up in the same household? They're learning and learning and learning there it is. on how to have a full family, a solid family, not a broken family. I'm also standing here as a successful husband. Can I spend a hundred with y'all? My wife and I's 10 year marriage anniversary will be in May. And she is the only woman I've ever been faithful to. I will have a lot of guys ask me, how are you able to be a, a fitness instructor, have women talking about you, interested in you, and still stay focused? I said two things. First, where your focus goes, your energy flows. If I'm on IG, looking at IG models all day, how can I be faithful to my wife? How can I pay attention to my wife? Second thing, control your sexual appetite. Don't be loose. I see too many men breaking women down. Just because they keep coming back doesn't mean that you do what you're doing is right. Stop breaking women down, build the women up. Yeah. So I no longer object to my women. I no longer look at them as physical beings only. I look at them as queens. I look at them as nurturers. I look at them as being super dope individuals. But I would have understood it if I hadn't went through my process. If you ever find yourself struggling, going through a process, you don't understand it, that's okay. Always move forward. Keep moving forward with grit, determination. Don't ever stop because on the other end of this thing, you're going to be all right and you're going to go through the process, but I don't, I don't want you just to go through the process. I want you to grow through the process. Yeah. Woo. My name is Tommy Morgan. I thank you. What up, what up? What's going on my next life grind? Dirts. So I was actually going to do a close out to the Become the Best You conference. I was going to do a video yesterday, but man, all the traveling, uh, coming back to South Carolina, was super tired. And so this morning, today is Tuesday. I want to do a closeout on this the whole experience. Right, it was my second one. It was the second live Become the Best You event. Another amazing event. And can't wait to the next one. The next one's going to be in August. So really, really excited about that. I'll be speaking in that one as well. And we're just going to keep the grind going. But the biggest highlight for the weekend was super duper dopeness. It's really hard to say. It's one of those particular type of events to where there's, it's impossible for you to leave the same way you came in. You always leave changed, you always leave better. Because again, not everybody has it together. Nobody, nobody has it together, matter of fact, let me say that. We might be doing well in specific areas or certain areas, but there's always growth in some particular area. And so it was super dope to be around a lot of individuals who were just amazing, amazing people and just sharing their stories. And we grow through other people's experiences and we start to understand things about ourselves. And a lot of times when we hear other people's experiences, we find out that we have parallels. And so again, we just feed off each other's energy and we're all about growth and positivity. So becoming the best you was a definitely a super dope experience. It was my first time as an official speaker. I can call myself a speaker now, joining the stage because I've been a part of Toastmasters all the way starting back in like 2015 then moved up to being certified as a Blackville speaker by Dr. Ruben West 
back in 2019 and I always had the excuse that uh, you know what uh, the military has me busy I have this going on that going on but finally finally grace the stage had to share my story and in the beginning when I shared the story I, or when I was thinking about sharing the story I wasn't going to dig as deep I was going to try to gloss over certain things but I see a shift in the mentality and the mindset of us as men and I wanted to dig deep and tell you my experiences because I think there needs to be certain things that need to be adjusted. Um, and I'm the one who's been through the ins and outs, the highs and lows, when it comes to being a certain way and doing 180 degree to turn in my life, uh, especially when it, when it comes to just not objectifying women anymore and treating them as queens, uh, which that's what I do right now with my current wife, my amazing wife, treat her as a queen, the queen that she deserves to be. But I had to dig deep. God told me in my spirit, he said, you better not gloss over anything. So I want you to dig deep and I want you to be 100% honest. Be straight transparent. And that's therapy for me. I feel a whole lot better by getting it off my chest. And the more and more I tell that story, the less and less I can be, I'm going to be so emotional. But when you dig deep like that, it creates you to be vulnerable. And it's okay for us to be um, as men and be vulnerable. And I hear people saying, oh, well, alpha men, alpha, alpha men are not vulnerable like that. Anybody know me know I'm super 100% alpha. And the vulnerability allows me to show you that I'm human. You know what I mean? We do have feelings. We do have stuff we go through. And so we want to express those things because guess what? People need to get it off their chest and stop holding it inside here. Get it out there so other people can learn from your story. Because these kids, these youth, they're watching us. They're learning from us. They're moving in the same speed, in the same direction we're moving into. And so let's lead them right. Anyway, this is Tommy Morgan. Let's keep grinding. And y'all, let's get it. Y'all thought I was done. I would be remiss if I didn't give a couple special shout outs to, I can't hit everybody up. You know what I mean? I can't announce everybody, but I know people's working behind the scenes to get this event going. It's a lot of work, a lot of logistics and everything. So I do appreciate, shout out to Brenda, shout out to Terrence, shout out to Anthony, shout out to Heather, shout out to Izzy, and many, many others who are behind the scenes to get this event, making this event to be the best event. Anyway, y'all keep grinding and I truly, truly appreciate you all. Anyway, let's get it.